What is up my collectors, it is your boy Referino here and today we will be looking at the SH Figure Arts Cell First Form Figure. Now this was a guy I was initially not intending to pick up whatsoever, then Amazon Prime Day rolled around and they were like, you know this $75 action figure? We'll give it to you for $46. As an offer I cannot refuse, uh, you know, I've never spent more than $50 on an action figure thus far and that still holds up true because this guy was on sale. I don't know too much about the figure itself. I love the Cell Saga though, so. All right, it's time to unbox this boy without tearing the box too much. Yeah, too late for that. <laughs> Okay, so first thing I noticed about the box is that they put the instructions on the side now. They don't print the instructions like they used to. So sad. Oh, whoa, okay. There's there's two thingies. One for extra accessories and then the figure itself. Okay, uh, okay, okay. Here he is. Cell first form. Holy guacamole. I wouldn't say he's like sturdy. This guy is so cool. There's a little bit of pieces kind of everywhere. I also have to open this. I don't even know where, how the, they put this in the box. So I, I, I need to sort some things out. I'm also recording several reviews at the same time. So let's do a fade in, fade out real quick for our boy, Cell. All right, so now we have Imperfect Cell in hand. I put on his tail and all that stuff. And I must say, this is a figure that really blew my expectations out of the water. We'll get into why that is in just a second, but first let's start with appearance. So as you can see, Cell is covered in these black spots. This is how he appears in the anime and manga. There's so many and they're all molded in. So it feels really weird. It feels like a bug. As you can see, he's kind of got this top crescent piece. I'm not sure what this is. I'm not the biggest Cell information expert, but it looks nice. You know, I think Imperfect Cell's design is kind of underrated, but it's also because a lot of people think he's ugly. This is his head, by the way. His whole head piece is just this orange thing. We'll get into that with the face plates later. But yeah, moving on to the chest, he's got the black spot here. He's got two different shades of green going about this dark, like money paper green, and then this light, like not lime, but you can see it going on the shoulder pads. The shoulder pads are dark green. The bicep is light. He's sporting some orange on his abdomen and crotch right here. And then on his inside, beyond his armor, you can see a lot of the light blue. And that becomes more visible with the joints. So it's a pretty seamless transition for like instance, when you bend the knee or something. Moving down to the legs, as you can see, it goes from lime green to dark green. And then the feet looks good. We'll do the back as well. That's very important. Wings, you can see they're dark green, they're covered in spots and the tail is as well and then on there underneath it's all black yeah very very cool looking figure i must say i know there is one big complaint i hear about appearance and that it's his height and perfect cell is a tall lanky dude like image right here and this figure is a little bit of that but he's not as tall and lanky as he could be probably an engineering problem they couldn't make it so that he'd stand up very well if he was that tall they have to shrink the big guys down a little and bring the small guys up a little as well. Me personally, it doesn't really bother me. I would trade his height for a better functioning action figure. All right, so we'll get into articulation now. And this is a lot of the interesting things about this figure. So a few people have reported that his joints are kind of tight and you know, they are, they, they squeak a lot. So he is, he is kind of a tight figure. He doesn't feel fragile to me. Like it doesn't feel like he's ever going to break but he is, he is a bit of a squeaky guy. And the most squeaky part is the head. So we'll start with this. So he can move down with the neck and also move up. And yeah, you, you, you can hear the squeakiness. The neck is probably the stiffest part, at least for me. It is, yeah, you, you can just listen to that and make the judgment for yourself. I don't need Cell to have a super loose head, so it doesn't really bother me. The arms, he can do almost a 360. Kind of not because of the shoulder pad, but like the arm articulation is insane. He's got to be a little bit careful with it, but like, look, 360, almost good. There is no like double bend at the arms. Quick editors know I am wrong about the double bend at the arm. He's doing it right now. And to demonstrate that, I put him in a solar flare pose. So yeah, 
Whoopsie daisy, he can totally bend in his arms perfectly fine. I guess it'd be the butterfly joint in here makes up for it tremendously. Like, look at that, dude. That's so cool. Ab crunch kind of crunches, kind of doesn't. I, it's kind of hindered by the wings, but you, you can get it to go a little bit. Pretty, pretty decent. He is a little wobbly though. So I guess, I don't know if this is like a QC issue or not, but tightness at the head, a little wobbly at the lower part of himself. It's nowhere near as bad as other figures made by Vietnam, but it is a little bit of a hindrance sometimes when you're trying to get him to stand. Honestly, for a guy who has a tail, it is very, very nice to make him stand. Like, it's not hard at all. Compared to Frieza, oh my goodness, bro. This guy can stand pretty well. See? You have to make him lean over a little bit, but in Perfect Cell is kind of always that lanky dude that would lean over, so it's okay. Legs can move up. Oh my god, it's almost as much as the arms. You, you, I could probably make it go all the way around if I like move this arm out of the way. Oh my god, you can. Dude, I love these joints. And then double bend. Dude, these joints are actually like sick. The, the things you could make this figure do. And then feet, they can uh, move out. They don't really move from side to side because they're kind of like flat. And then we'll do the back real quick. So these wings, I was told that they pop off really easily. Since I've opened mine, they haven't come off once. They are a little frail though. But, you know, wings, they're pretty cool. Actually, I should probably keep those up to show off the tail. So the tail doesn't come on in the box, obviously. It's a separate accessory, so I put it together. It's got, I think, three points of articulation in here. So this is on a ball, peg, joint, whatever you call it. So that gives it a lot of movement, and it'll help with balance. It's not just like a single joint like Frieza's, so thank God. The second point of movement is right here. And then the last point is with this tail end piece that you're supposed to remove to get the suction tail. Tail is is nice. I You can get it to do a lot. I can't even like show you everything it can do. And I could also make him lean on it if I don't feel like making him stand. Actually, no, he's not. He's not leaning on it here. He's just, yeah. So, you know, you can move the tail around a lot, which makes standing up so much easier. But yeah, so overall with articulation, there are a few little problems, sure, but I think those can be ignored for the fact that the arms and legs move pretty freaking well, as well as the fact that this guy has a big beefy tail and standing up isn't a problem for your boy. Okay, so now we're gonna get on to accessories, which are a little bit interesting. So it comes in two separate plastic pieces, I guess, cause there's just a lot. So including the face he comes with, he comes with four faces in total. So this is kind of his neutral looking face, mouth closed. To remove the face plates, there's a little tricky because of the way this crescent piece, whatever you call it works. So it connects to the face and the head at the same time. I can't explain it very well. You're just gonna have to see. So at first it was kind of hard to take this thing off. Now it's kind of easy since I've done it a few times now. So yeah, this orange thing is literally just the head, but like, as you can see, there's, there's separate pegs for the face and then the crescent head piece. And I usually remove the head, but I'm not gonna do it for this figure. I could probably get it to go off with hot water, but I don't really feel like it because it's kind of unnecessary. This is his second face. It's kind of, it's like a creepy grin. All right, so probably my least favorite he comes with is literally just the same face as before, but he's looking off to the side. They included this because he has Kamehameha charge hands and they want you to pose him with the Kamehameha like this, like looking to the side and charging it. I think this face is just unnecessary though. Like we didn't, this is just the same as the face I just showed. And then his last face is a screaming face, which again, it looks pretty good. Okay, so the last thing he comes with in terms of head accessories is an extra crescent helmet piece. Apparently there is a difference in these two things and it's the amount of slant right here, I guess. Okay, here he is with the extra piece, and then on the left, I'll put the photo of what he looked like with the other piece. Okay, and including the set of fists you get with him in the box, he comes with five sets of hands. I'll demonstrate how to swap the hands. All you do is you just pop this off, and then you can pop another one on 
It's basically like the head, but way easier. Second set of hands include these relaxed kind of just open palm hands. I mean, they're not open palm, but you know, just relaxed hands. Third set of hands, which I believe are like claw grabbing hands. Or maybe that's what the next set of hands are. I don't know, you guys tell me, but either this hands or the next hands are the charging effect hands. And then these are more claw hands, but the fingers are bent, that's the only difference. Maybe these are the charging hands and that's like grabbing. I'm, I'm really, I have no idea. And then these last set of hands are the open palm blast effect hands or like shooting a small blast out with your hand. All right, now there's one more accessory here, which is probably my favorite one, but is the most difficult to put on. So we have the tail suction piece, which he uses to suck up his enemies. And you know, I kind of forget that the tail is considered an accessory. We, d I didn't show what it looked like removed just because that it came removed in the box and that's not really important. So essentially this piece right here, the second piece of the tail becomes connected to the ball pad. But when I try to pull this piece off, the ball pad comes off with the original tail piece. And that's usually a problem. There's a fix to this though. You put the joint in hot water and it loosens it to the point where I can pull it off and it'll stay connected to here. I don't know if this is a QC issue, but they made the joint inside this tail too tight because this doesn't want to pop off from here. All right, there we go. I put it in hot water for about a minute. It loosens the plastic for those who don't know. I don't usually like doing this, but it's the only way I can get this suction tail on. So. Yeah, kind of a bummer, but you know, easy fix. So far, it hasn't failed me yet. There, pops in like so. And then now you have the suction tail equipped for imperfect cell. Ah, I broke the tail. No, I didn't. It just popped out of its socket. So here's what the tail looks like outside, by the way. I know I didn't show that, but pops right back in. That's kind of just what the tail looks like as compared to this piece. Uh, this is just so cool. I don't know why you would pose him like this. All right, here we have Imperfect Cell standing next to some other SHF Dragon Ball characters. I just think the scaling here is really funny. So Piccolo is almost the same height as Imperfect Cell, which might frustrate some people. I mean, I just think it's really funny. Like look at Frieza. Frieza is like half the height of Imperfect Cell already. Like imagine if they had made him up to scale, dude. It would have been so weird. All right, so now we are getting to the final section of this review. For those who are new, I create a five category rating system to rank each figure with a number score. If you disagree with the score, I give this figure, that is your opinion, this is my biased final thoughts. Appearance on Imperfect Cell. I think despite this height, I'm gonna give him a two out of two. I know some people, you know, the height thing is a total no. It doesn't bother me. I don't, I don't really care. I think they had to scale him down a little bit just so that he fits well with the other figures. But I mean, like other than that, everything on here is perfect. The molding, everything, it looks phenomenal articulation so i'm gonna give this one a two out of two as well so i know that there are some tightness in the joints especially near the head and neck but i think that these things kind of counteract by the fact that a the arm and leg articulation is stellar secondly the tail moves spectacularly which makes it so that he's not hard to stand up as well as the fact that the wings don't really hinder anything i mean i was told some of the wings pop off but for the most part, the wings aren't even a problem either. Accessories. Now listen, I was ready to bash this figure for like no cool accessories, but I'm giving him a two out of two on accessories because here's the thing. I wanted him to come with like a Kamehameha effect because it would have been cool to be a character that isn't like Goku or Gohan to have a Kamehameha because Cell can do that. But honestly, I don't, I don't know. That's really the only thing. Value for money. Again, I was ready to tear this figure apart for being $75. But now having it in hand, I think I gotta give the value for money a two out of two because like, we're just giving everything a two out of two, but it's actually super worth it. Like I was ready to tear this figure apart. I was like a $70 figure that's not even that big comes with all these weird accessories. Like, no, it actually, the figure itself is great. If the worst thing about it is the fact that the head is a little too tight and it's not like wobbly, that just tells me everything. And then personal enjoyment. Come on, guys. Come on. Two out of two. Put it on the screen. This 
is a 10 out of 10 figure. Like, honestly, this figure is great. It's phenomenal. I love it. I'm not even the biggest Cell guy. He's probably my least favorite villain from Dragon Ball Z. Although he is the villain in my favorite saga from that same show, I never liked it for Cell himself. If you want to get like the Cell saga characters, this is a must have. Even though Imperfect Cell's appearance is short lived, this guy, oh my God, is just so cool. And I can't wait for them to create the other two Cell forms. But yeah, that's going to leave it for this review today, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe. If you didn't, please leave a comment and telling me what I could change or do better. I created this YouTube channel to learn more about action figures because I just started collecting them this year. From the SHF line, I collect Dragon Ball and Naruto. I'm looking to maybe expand my interests a little bit. You know, I'm taking building block steps to kind of building my collection. But as of right now, I'm kind of, I'll consider any and all recommendations from you guys. Currently the budget is $0, but that doesn't super matter to me. And I would love to hear back from you guys. So that's going to leave it from me. Have a good rest of your day today guys and i will see you in the next video goodbye